if you go back to two slides please okay sir this, this one, one sir. this one uh, one thing is missing here uh, you see whenever these afferent and efferent uh, nerves they enter and exit the spinal cord at these levels which are um, uh, shown here s234 and probably s1 also uh, there is a coordinating center in the lateral hall cells so uh, in the spinal uh, the spinal cord there is a posterior portion and there is an anterior horn cells and there are certain cells which are in between and these are known as lateral horn cells now these lateral horns are under the direct control of uh, horns which uh, we were discussing a day earlier a day um, uh, uh, one day back um, day before yesterday uh, in the pons uh, as i was uh, alluding to uh, there are, there are two uh, sets of nuclei median pontine and the lateral pontine nuclei these two uh, nuclei they have got their own nerves and they control this spinal reflex arc or the micturition reflex arc at the level of each s234 but at the lateral horn cells so the lateral horn cells are actually the coordinating centers which facilitate or inhibit maturation either they facilitate storage or they facilitate evacuation 
so in that way the whole thing goes on and uh, any child that uh, who is born actually learns this thing through um, through a process which we call conditioned reflex normally when a child is born this reflex arc is so intact that whenever 100 ml or probably 50 ml of urine comes into the bladder the bladder distends then there is automatic automatic evacuation of the bladder but then the person or the child actually teaches himself or herself how to inhibit urine at a particular time or facilitate urine evacuation at a certain time so this is known as conditioned reflex so these these are the points that have to be mentioned here yes please proceed yes sir uh, sir uh, i have also mentioned these points but they are in the in the next slides okay okay sorry so when that no it's okay sir i will also explain here um, in the topic of female incontinence and neuropathy disorders uh, i will Okay. About them all. Okay. Okay. So next one. Okay. So this is an only one thing. If you look at the back, you can uh, see that we have uh, females who have got to be both muscular and short tail. Uh, the reason I'm having striated is because body and outer circular layer, and uh, during the wording phase, the longitudinal layer shortens to the body. Uh, we can also. Uh, we also see some of the vasculature, which is a uh, rich vas vascular tract, is called a celiac tract. And the uh, spinal epithelium, uh, which is at distal urethra, and this is uh, like sensory distribution. Right. Yes. So, there are outlet man versus woman, severe swallows, but there's different outlets. This is a mirror diagram. Uh, we can see that uh, this diagram is normal and also updated. We can see by the one year or the external users in the urinary diaphragm, which is main spot in the urethra and external users in the. Uh, what we see here is that uh, all the three things, the greater uterus and it goes by a muscular or muscle of the pelvic floor. The greater closing part of the muscle, the lemon closing part, and the bowel closing part of the spiritual of the pelvic floor. This is the main diagram which is telling us about uh, we can see greater pelvic bone with the condemnance con zone, which is prominent over here. And this is a poorly supported condemnance zone, and in, in, in this type of an organ, we see the incontinence. And not the only many interesting protein and continents do the bridge mechanism, which is the intensive tree component along with whole length. And extrinsic which we use external bridges in the mid distal one of the bridge are pressure of greater neck and proximal bridge are above the general diaphragm. And the MC level two support. Uh, actually, these are three types of sports which are uh, known as the MC. Uh, Support which are, which are supporting the urinary bladder and uh, in the uh, urogenital organs. But uh, the NMC level 2 support here supports the endothelic fascia, which includes pubic cervical fascia and PDA and recto vaginal posteriorly, along with the greater MI to arcus tendinous fascia family. So these are actually holding uh, uh, the units of anterity and, and posteriorly, they are supporting the urine bladder. Okay, uh, as I have already told you, many continents are under points types, those uh, are not uh, types. There are two basic types of human continents, continuous type and intermediate type. The continuous type includes total and partial and intermediate type includes stress, human continents, or overgrown continents. Doctor and nurses function important as it is how the business or in this person active. So, in this pathophysiology, uh, which is the decrease outer resistance or either decrease pressure 
on this and normal communication uh, which I'm going to tell in the next slide and both of the reservoir. Okay, now this is uh, the continuous incontinence when the patient is always provided. We see that the cause of this is the vesicle is anal fistula, which can be either by which is bilateral, vitro anal fistula. The maturation desire is usually absent and there's no greater distension as the patient is always fed. While in the partial continuous incontinence, here we see that the maturation desire is present, but it is less than normal. And the period may or may not be distended. And because of it is unilateral with the general fistula, uh, which is small, then we are already high. The intermediate incontinence in the passes intermittently, and patient is dry in between involuntary loss of urine. Stress, in stress incontinence, when intravesical pressure exceeds. Intra-mixer pressure due to increase in intra-abdominal pressure by stress, which uh, I'll further explain by the stress incontinence. Uh, the second type of incontinence is urge incontinence, which is associated with strong desire to wait due to this short retrosal instability. The third type is uh, a reflex intermediate incontinence in it due to abnormal reflex activity in spinal cord. Due to pain, tumor, and spinal cord injury, which is associated with strong desire to work. Again, it is also a continuous that intra vital pressure exceeds intra pressure pressure due to excessive greater distension. The greater distension has exerted in alpha pressure. Uh, nocturnal angulus is usually seen, example, uh, spina bifida, if this was spina bifida and small middle capacity or psychosomatic and in children, uh, is nocturnal angulus. It can be constantly to immobility or cognitive impairment in to get to the toilet or the person who wants to go to the toilet. This is general stress incontinence. This is an involuntary loss of stored of urine simultaneously with the maneuvers that increases intra-abdominal pressure, which ends abruptly with the end of the act. So uh, you can see that if you have various degrees of stress incontinence, uh, grade one is incontinence occurs only with severe stress, such as after sleeping, etc. Grade two with more great stress, such as rapid movement or walking up or down the stairs, and grade three is incontinence with mild stress, such as standing. The patient is moderate to spine condition. This is part of the result we have already The etiology of the incontinence is that uh, the, for the general stress incontinence, uh, congenital weakness of the bladder and neck, obesity, innervation of sphincter mechanism, of pelvic floor, uh, neck and bladder, uh, the during delivery. And estrogen deficiency uh, uh, in menopause. Uh, the other physiological causes are the other causes are retrosal instability, uh, retention with overflow incontinence, with a genital fistula, and relatively uh, urinary tract infection or drugs like alcohol workers, which are diverticular. The congenital abnormalities, ectopic filter, bladder, and stroke, etc. When the functional and neurological disorders like dementia are finally in the space of the pain, etc. Okay, for the management, we have to uh, like, uh, start from before management, we have to take a peak history for bowel habits, pelvic problem collapse, co existent medical problems, obsessive pain, stroke, pelvic surgery, poor neurological symptoms, lifestyle issues, medications. Sweating quality, of treating factors, urine loss, frequency of incontinence episodes, uh, duration, constant intermittent urine loss, associated lower urinary tract symptoms, and urinary tract infection. In history, we have to be careful for the for the signs of the red flag, uh, like chamaduria, neurological deficits, suspected cancer, or suspected fistula. And after taking history, we have to go for examination, which I'll have in the next slide. So a word about history. 
You see, whenever somebody, uh, I, I want to say something here. Uh, earlier, we yes. were discussing the art of taking history. You see, uh, this is something which uh, is taught to us in our very early days of uh, medical education when we are in the third years of, of uh, MBBS. So perhaps two things are, uh, are taught at that point in time. One is you have to take history uh, sometimes indirectly, sometimes you ask uh, some direct questions. Uh, whenever you have got a very long list of differential diagnoses, you want to uh, pinpoint something in the history. Either the patient will tell you, but in most instances, patient won't tell you each and everything related to a very long list as you have shown here in, in the history, uh, in this slide. So what we do, we always categorize our patient on certain aspects. For instance, if somebody comes to me, uh, a female gender with um, saying that he, she has got incontinence, urinary incontinence. So I, before asking too many questions, I want to uh, keep myself on one side of uh, the table or the other. So I ask the patient, please go to the toilet and uh, evacuate your bladder, whatever is there in the bladder. Now, after evacuation, I would like to see the ultrasound of the bladder. Now, if the bladder has got residual urine, then for me, this is something which is overflow incontinence because I'm believing in the history, in the, um, in, in the complaint that the patient has and she has incontinence of urine. Now, if the bladder is empty on uh, post-maturation ultrasound, this might be of a long list. Maybe it is genuine stress incontinence. Maybe it is a, a, a fistulous tract which is causing incontinence or all these things that have to be sorted out later. But first of all, we have to make the patient broadly classified into two groups. One that has got a residue in the bladder, one that has, hasn't got anything in the bladder after maturation. So uh, before going into the details of urodynamics and history taking, if you just do something uh, by asking the patient to avoid, it will categorize the patient into broad categories. And then you can always um, meticulously uh, go into the details of uh, those aspects. So this is uh, my understanding of the subject. Yes, please uh, proceed. Uh, this is uh, one of the uh, uh, thing which we do that is uh, a greater time for 24 hours daily diet and in the initial classification uh, we ask the patient to have a greater diet for three days and in it, in it we can see the, the total amount of the fluid that patient is taking and the uh, amount of fluid which uh, is made and we can also see that by taking this uh, type of certain fluid uh, is uh, the amount of the in a factor or not type for example uh, in a or or when is there any leak in it and uh, the period of sensation as well. Uh, coming to the examination, we go further to the examination, uh, examination which is very important uh, as well as one of the respect of urinary continent. Uh, uh, redness of the clothes or that is seen uh, in abdominal scars and lower abdominal heart seen for, for any, any type of uh, surgery or cardiac surgery is that abdominal spine is available later and uh, stromagy. Other examination, the regular examination, sterilization, and the skin cell control, fecal impaction. These all are seen just for to rule out that is there any, any kind of neurological episode. To check S2, S3, and S4, uh, the intactness that the nerves are intact, and we do for the neurological examination, the mental status, and the real sensation to, uh, uh, to check that definition of S2, S3, and S4. As I said, the classes by S2, S3, S4, the good situation. We also see the analytic text by scratching a with a pen. 
So when is the paper process 23? Okay. Uh, up till now, uh, I have uh, uh, tell about the validation of the continuous mechanism, types of continents, physiology, linear continents. And now I'm going to tell about the use of activity disorders and circular mechanism. So, the immediate coordinates and neuropathic disorders. So, this is the basic uh, thing, normal restoration, which is primarily a spinal reflex controlled by the CNS, uh, which do three things the brain, pons, and sacral spinal cord, which coordinates functions of urinary bladder and urethral sphincter. So, in brain, uh, we are having frontal lobe of the brain, which consists of the maturation control center. Primary activity of the CNT is to send chronically inhibitory signals to their dorsal muscle via pons to prevent labor amping under socially acceptable places of delivery. This is MCC, calcium voluntary control of maturation. Signals from brain pass through pons and then they come to sacral spinal cord before reaching the urinary bladder. So a pons is coming between. Okay, now spinal cord. The spinal cord functions as a communication pathway between pons and sacral spinal cord. Pons consists of confined maturation center, and uh, this confined maturation center is a relay center between brain and sacral spinal cord. Pons maturation center is responsible for coordinated activities of the glossal and the urethral sphincter so that they work in synergy. That is, when the glossal contracts, the sphincter relaxes. For a non nutrition center is affected by uh, emotional behaviors, excited or scared, sometimes can lead to the problems. You can see in this picture also that there are three centers. One is the, the frontal over, then a pawn, and then the spinal center. So these are three centers. And you can see here the one-line nutrition center. This is uh, the upper nutrition center, the frontal lobe. Sacral spinal cord, it consists of sacral reflex center. It is a primitive maturation center. Uh, in infants up to three to four years of age, uh, maturation is controlled directly by sacral reflex center. And after three to four years of age, due to toilet training, training takes over the control of the maturation. So, up to three to four years of, of our life, uh, the sacral spinal cord and sacral reflex center serve a very important role. Okay, in infants, when urine fails, uh, the infant bladder and the sinner is saved by the sacral spinal cord. Uh, the uh, sacral spinal cord automatically triggers from fractions of the petrosal without voluntary control, as uh, so I have already told and explained this point. And uh, there is involuntary dorsal contraction with coordinated warning. But when the infant is grown up, like the next slide, I will tell you this. Next slide. Okay. We are also having an autonomic uh, peripheral nervous system. In normal condition, the urinary bladder and internal urethral sphincter are under the control of the sympathetic nervous system. When this sympathetic nervous system is active, the relaxation of the glossal and contraction of the internal urethral sphincter is there, and there is inhibition of the maturation, and this is actually the bladder filling phase. But when the sympathetic nervous system is stimulated, and this contraction of the glossal and relaxation of the relaxation of the internal urethral sphincter occurs, causing the maturation reflex to be generated. Again, the sympathetic nervous system, I have already told you previous that both hypoglass reflexes and current sympathetic nerve axis, both are nerve axis. Uh, so, I think the nervous system is very important because it is under the attack control of the brain. Uh, you can see that uh, it is under the voluntary control of the brain, uh, the voluntary control of the brain, which occurs through the somatic peripheral nervous system uh, by, on, by a nucleus, one of previous. Uh, by S to S3, S4 nerve to protect the nerve supplies, pelvic musculature as well, and external urethral sphincter as well. So these are having our somatic uh, direct control. So 
is a pain the right now. We can see over here the satellite nutrition center and supplying the S2 SKS port at the acrobatic nerves of type B equal to L2 in public nerves. You can also see the sympathetic inhibition and the parents and brain nerve supply. This is not the most impressive results with the dorsal contraction. You can see over here the pudendal nerve at that, which is supplying the external sphincter and the pelvic floor muscle, which is like our upper and three muscle. Brain ligands, you know, and pathophysiology, you know, that in theater can occur in any of the four mental sites are affected. Ligands of the brain above the level of pons destroy nutrition control center, lead to complete loss of voluntary control. Uh, the primitive neonatal nutrition reflex, uh, that is, central reflex center, and the contrary nutrition center remains intact in, in case of ligand. Above the level of pons. Uh, the loss of control over primitive neonatal nutrition reflex makes it autonomous and later empties too quickly and too often, and its storage capacity is lost. The persistence of combined nutrients and central controls synergistic functions between the dorsal and internal resource center. So, urge will cause as or spastic greater or the dorsal hyperataxia. Example in case of uh, high energy, cellular palsy, stroke, and uh, space occupying layers as well. In case of spinal cord layers, injuries or diseases of the spinal cord decay cause the sexual spinal cord results in patient controlled solely by the sexual reflex center. So patients have urge incontinence or spastic care of other closer hyper reflex. But due to loss of control by Compound nutrition center, the synergistic function between the dorsal and internal users of the stores leading to this synergy. This is a two spinal cord injury, and if we have an issue with quantum nervous system, it's a spinal shock, and during spinal shock, this classic paralysis below the level of the injury. And anal and bulbo coverness reflexes are attached. Autonomic activity is depressed and, they depress and the individual experiences a urinary retention and constipation. This is the dorsal A and flex After post spinal shock, uh, the stars were approximately uh, 6 to 12 weeks. The adult function returns, but they did not work with the dorsal hyperreflexia. And uh, we can see the paradoxical contraction of external nature's sphincter due to spasticity and uh, this energy of internal nature center. Okay, cycle cord uh, injury. Cycle cord injury may prevent data from happening, uh, this sensory neurogenic data. May not be able to sense even when labor is fully due to injury of the efferent fiber in pyramid nerves. Motor neurogenic labor is a type of labor in which the labor is full. Patient has sense retrosal may not contract due to injury to efferent parasympathetic fibers in pelvic spinal nerve following retrosal inflex. When a cycle cord injury leads to overflow incontinence, other causes are herniated discs, number of laminectomy, power, crush injuries, central cord tumors. These are all the central cord tumors which are affecting the bladder in the pancreas. Uh, you can just stop here for a moment. Um, go back to the previous slide. Yes, this one. You see, if uh, all of us uh, want to understand it, then it is slightly difficult and maybe slightly um, easy also but what we need to know is uh, we need to imagine the spinal cord first and we need to see what are the centers which are actually um, involved in the whole micturation uh, reflex arc one is the spinal level which is actually at 
ash 1 2 3 4 uh, the other one is the pons and there are certain higher centers also which includes the cerebral cortex particularly the frontal cortex the internal capsule the basal ganglia they all have their importance uh, but for all practical purposes if pons and lower down is intact then the whole process will go on properly close to normal but if above the spinal reflex segments for instance the sacral segments if the spinal cord is transected above that point then this is known as upper motor neuron lesion if the spinal segments at the uh, sacral segments are involved then this is known as the lower motor neuron lesion so if you broadly classify then you will be able to understand what's happening with the bladder if the spinal cord has trans has got transaction probably because of some accident or whatever and if there is upper motor neuron lesion this the facilitatory and inhibitory effect which controls and coordinates the maturation reflex is lost and since the maturation reflex is not coordinated properly then the bladder becomes low in capacity and becomes spastic right because whatever urine comes into the bladder it will produce a lot of uh, sensation and the person starts maturation normally what happens is there is when the bladder starts filling with urine there is first sensation of uh, uh, urge to micturate and that comes at the level of probably 150 to 200 ml of urine in the bladder in a normal person this is the first sensation of bladder filling which can easily be inhibited voluntarily by the person and this is coordinated by the frontal cortex the second sensation of bladder filling comes at the level of like probably 300 to 350 ml now this is a sensation which urges the patient to go to the toilet and micturate but again this can also be inhibited voluntarily by the brain but there is a third sensation also at which the person will not be able to delay micturation and that comes after 350 probably at 400 to 500 ml of urine the person has to go to the toilet no matter what happens otherwise the there, there will be a little bit of dribbling we don't call it incontinence we call it dribbling because the mechanism is normal now this whole coordination and inhibition and facilitation is lost when there is upper motor neuron lesion if there is a low motor neuron lesion then the whole reflex arc is not there the bladder becomes flaccid meaning to say it will not contract it will be just um, a lethargic sort of a bladder which can contain a lot of urine inside but will not be able to evacuate the person becomes slightly uh, in retention but normally what happens in the lower motor neuron lesion some of the spinal segments are involved and some are actually spared so there is a mixed bag either there is a mixed picture of flaccidity and spasticity or there there are a lot of things which can be or which has to be judged by doing urodynamics so this is this can be very simple but this can also be very complex because whenever injury happens to the spinal cord if at the sacral level it might spare a, one or two segments maybe it involves s2 maybe it doesn't involve s3 and 4 so reflex arc since it has got an element of three to four segments of a spinal cord of a sacral spinal cord uh, it is in a way advantageous and in favor of uh, the micturation reflex arc now for instance uh, herniated disc lumbar laminectomy pelvic crush injuries sacral cord tumors it doesn't follow the rules in in a sense that it might or might not transact the outflow or inflow of uh, spinal uh, senses completely or incompletely 
for instance laminectomy may be involving uh, because of a herniated disc s2 or 3 sparing s4 perhaps so a little bit of function is there but not a total function so this is a kind of a, um, complex picture which normally in daily life happens where you as a urologist um, your, your opinion is sought by somebody who is uh, um, who is dealing with the patient from neurosurgery for instance yes please proceed so do you understand everybody uh, all our friends or is there any question any clarification because now we are going into the details of the subject anybody anybody wants to say anything at this point Okay, please proceed. Uh, now I will tell about the thyroid nerve disease, uh, which includes the protected nerve injury, which uh, leads to potentially pelvic growth muscle and external uterus sphincter. The only control of the nutrition is impaired, and uh, what we see is uh, stress incontinence. Uh, diet of neurogenic bladder. Which includes the adrenal hyperreflexia, adrenal sphincteritis, and as well as the adrenal hyperreflexia. And adrenal hyperreflexia with impaired contact therapy, adrenal instability, and adrenal reflexia. These are all the types of endotactic therapy. Uh, treatment is prophylactic, uh, uh, treatment of the predisposing factors. Good obstetric care. Uh, Postnatal pelvic exercises are advised for female. Uh, hormone replacement therapy in postmenopausal women uh, is a good choice. A proper surgical technique to avoid uh, scarring at the time. Conservative treatment includes lifestyle modification, uh, weight loss. Uh, you have to stop uh, taking caffeine, smoking. Uh, proper fluid management should be there. Uh, medically, conservative treatment is estrogen, either systemic or local in post menopausal uh, women, along and uh, alpha allergic stimulants. Physical therapy uh, and pelvic load exercises. We can also use uh, mechanical devices, for example, passive weighted phones, uh, if the patient is unfit for stress. And implanted artificial sphincters, paralysis of the ligaments, include collagen or fat. Coming to the surgical treatment, uh, the vaginal is the fasting, performed by Kelly Switcher. And uh, we apply get the paralysis pressure on either side of the head and neck for two to three centimeters. Uh, two, by two to three U shaped mattresses. And we go eight sutures. Uh, abdominal injuries of cystopexy is also a good choice. Which is an example by the operation. Switch to the front of the urinary barrier to carry costume of the back of the sympathesis. Use this. Use those three procedures. Minimal invasive skin like procedure includes tension free, examined tape activities, toss of greater tape, and activity secure slings. Treatment of urgent contents is there. We have the non surgical treatment and surgical treatment. The non surgical treatment includes reassurance, physiotherapy, medical treatment, antibiotics to treat for infections, anticholinergics, uh, tricyclic antidepressants, antiprostatinic, and local instruments, uh, intravagabodrenum toxin injections, and cyclone neuromodulation. While the surgical treatment includes the intravagabodrenum nerve section, second period denervation. 
the storage tension and mix and in mix time uh, we take the growth and growth of instability uh, first. Non-surgical treatment again, it's a way to boost well management, uh, cocktail body take, reduce smoking, general diet for exercises. Uh, this is a proper plan for greater and family for exercises, uh, which includes minimum uh, eight to ten contractions that are uh, twice a day, uh, three sets in a day for uh, <coughs> duration or for two months. Facilities, partners, devices, uh, regular avoiding, planning, uh, hormonal replacement therapy, which can be either systemic or uh, local, which is advice, uh, and a medication to an accelerator by oxygen, travel safe, and make the mind. Gender training is also done in which patients asked to have had a fixed time in which he. He, he or she is asked, uh, she is asked uh, to go to avoid uh, the jury and not before that time. And gradually, the uh, gap is increased between the boiling, uh, boiling phase. Surgical treatments again, this uh, includes birth repair, uh, martial, martial cancer repair, either suspension or uh, all those suspension, uh, invasion, stretcher, dependent tapes, artificial internal stretchers. This is first to do. And we will have to do a lot of better better perform at alacoscopy. This is also much faster recovery as well. Uh, the work procedures used to take stress incontinence, surgical management for stress incontinence. This is also surgical management for stress incontinence, which include partial maturity cancer operation. Switch over the portion of the pizza there, as you can see in this diagram. So, so what we do is in partial maturity cancer operation, we switch up, uh, there's a switch up of the anterior portion of the glitch up, the side and neck and to the posterior surface of the pubic bone for correction of the stress incontinence. Uh, these are the tension free and tape techniques. Uh, the UD is a procedure that stops UD taking by supporting the glitch up with a tape back strip of synthetic mesh that is placed. Uh, tape will be inserted through the vagina facing under the speech to create a supportive stain. Thank you. Right. If you go back to the last slide. Right. You see that the is one. yes. You see the basic principle is uh, this whole um, complex of um, external sphincter and pelvic diaphragm is actually a hammock. Hammock is like a jhula. Uh, it starts probably at the sacrococcygeal element of the bone and uh, goes up to the pubic bone. And it makes a kind of a hammock over which all the organs are actually passing through it and they become slightly angulated to have a continence mechanism. Now, this external sphincter, which we call external sphincter, is not a sphincter. It's, it is not a circular fiber as such. Uh, we have got levator and eye muscle, and this levator and eye has got three different layers. Now, external sphincter is actually offshoots of certain muscular fibers from the levator and eye muscle. And these fibers are coming from the periphery just like a fan from the lateral aspect as well as the posterior aspect. But they are not present in the anterior aspect of the urethra. So it is kind of a U shape. It is not a circular um, rounded shape external sphincter. So it's not a sphincter in a, in a, proper, in a proper way. So uh, what, what I mean to uh, stress upon here is there is an angle between the bladder and urethra and that angle actually is lost 
what we call as stress incontinence. So whatever the procedure we are proposing, like TBT or TOT or a Birch procedure or, or uh, Marshall uh, McKenzie procedure, these are all procedures which slightly makes this angle acute so that the urethra is, or this vesicourethral segment is closer to the pubic bone as it happened because of many conditions or because of many disease states. So that there, there is a, there is a separate uh, kind of uh, procedures which are done for just to make the angle acute and make it uh, stress-free or the treatment for stress incontinence. Uh, so th this has to be learned in more details whenever we take the subject again. Um, anybody wants to say anything at this point or uh, any clarification that is needed, uh, they are all welcome. Uh, I have a question. Yes, yes, yes. The principle remains the same. Um, it is uh, slightly different. Mesh is slightly different from uh, the vaginal tape. A tape is different. A mesh is different. Uh, it is different in uh, in its uh, fabric, uh, the uh, the polyester that we use. Mm -hmm. Uh, but also, but the principle remains the same. What we want to have here is acuteness of the angle. Yeah, any other person? So I want to, uh, I want to say something. Yes. 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 So uh, uh, what is the role of the uh, microfinance in this uh, like, uh, Micro? No, microfinance. Yes, we, we place the appendix in the bladder. Uh, that, uh, I remember some Metrofenoff, Metrofenoff, yes, yes, right, right. Uh, Metrofenoff is something which is done for um, for the diversion of urine, right? So, if, for instance, there is an incontinence, and that incontinence cannot be solved by any other means, you want the person to evacuate bladder properly and you want it to be in um, uh, in a dry fashion, meaning to say that it should not be a, an incontinent conduit, it should be a continent conduit. So for continent, for instance, if you do um, uh, harvest a segment of a small intestine, one part of the intestine is attached to the bladder and the other part of the intestine is taken out through the anterior abdominal wall, then this is an ileal conduit, but you have to place a urostomy bag over it, and this is an incontinent diversion. It will keep on filling, it will not stop. But the thing is, if you want it to be continent, you can harvest um, the appendix together with the meso appendix, that is the mesentery of the appendix. One part of it is attached to the bladder and the other part is taken out through a small hole uh, from the anterior abdominal wall. Now that has got a one-way valve mechanism. Whenever a catheter is placed through this conduit, it can evacuate the bladder, but when the catheter is out of, the, uh, out of this conduit, it will remain dry. It will not leak urine out of the bladder. So that is a metrophenol. But here we are talking about something which is uh, incontinence, particularly female incontinence, and treatment for female incontinence. Metrofenoff is used uh, somewhere else for other purposes, but not for the for the normal case of incontinence. Yes, sir. right. Jalal, you want uh, to say something? Yes, sir. Ji. Sir, in the, um, the slide which uh, mentions the subject of correction of the other incontinence, he mentioned delervation of the bladder. You see, there are many uh, theories behind urge incontinence. One of the theories is is become hypersensitive. Hypersensitive means that uh, the bladder tends to evacuate too often um, just before the actual capacity of the bladder is reached 
the person goes to the toilet to evacuate. So that is an overactive bladder syndrome. For that overactive bladder syndrome, you have to prove it that it is an overactive bladder by doing urodynamic study. Now, when you do urodynamic study, there, there are particular uh, um, identifiable graphs and graphical assessments of these uh, um, urodynamic assessments. And they would label the person as having uh, overactive bladder syndrome. Please mute your... Uh, Mute your mic, please. SM, please mute your mic. Yes. You see, when you diagnose a person having overactive bladder syndrome, then the treatment is to denervate. You can denervate the bladder by means of uh, botulinum toxin. So, this botulinum toxin will denervate the bladder and the bladder will become relaxed. In a normal fashion, it will act normally without hampering the central mechanism. It will only take care of the peripheral effect of the nerves. Okay. Thank you. Right. I think we have got time to discuss uh, some, uh, some other aspects of the disease also. So if anybody wants to raise those uh, aspects. Uh, can you just uh, repeat your question? I'm saying, sir, uh, incontinence, uh, is it, uh, why is it related to age? Uh, age is related You see, uh, incontinence is, uh, by definition, um, a loss of voluntary control over the micturation, ref uh, micturation act, right? So it can happen at any time uh, of life. It can happen in children, it can happen in adults. But there are, there, there are separate uh, disease aspects in children as well as in adults. For instance, if a child is born with a spina bifida, then there will be, uh, again, loss of control over the micturation act. So uh, the person can become incontinent also. But then they, uh, the cause is different. Uh, the person can uh, go from childhood to adulthood with the same problem of spina bifida, uh, depending upon whether this person has got some early surgery done on meningomyelocele, perhaps, which is the um, other effect of spina bifida, or the person has just got um, an occult spina bifida, which is not revealed, and then this is a very small defect. It doesn't cause any damage to the nerves and the person has gone on to adulthood. So it's a very interesting um, sort of disease complex. The uh, effect is the same as we are uh, just dealing here in continents, but the causation is, uh, there is a very long list. We have to take up each and every point separately at different, uh, age groups also and different and different physiological states of the patient also so uh, for instance as uh, somebody has mentioned that it is also dependent upon the presence or absence of certain hormones particularly estrogen so uh, it's it's very interesting maybe the person can give you only one thing that um, uh, there is an involuntary loss of urine but then you have to have a very long list of interrogative uh, and uh, investigative protocol to done with. Otherwise, you will not be able to uh, pinpoint the problem and will not be able to treat the problem um, properly. Nighttime incontinence in children. Nighttime incontinence in children. Now, we call it uh, uh, sort of a different kind of a thing. For instance, if this is something which is... Um, uh, below five years of age, then this might have got a different kind of uh, disease aspect. 
uh, we'll take these things, uh, I think, maybe in your presentation in the second round. So let's keep those things for there also. Okay. Right? Okay. Yes, um, any other point? No. So what about the uh, goal of uh, the special guest that you mentioned in the presentation? Best series? No, so special guest you mentioned the uh, in screen examination, you mentioned some special test for uh, incontinence evaluation. Right. Um, Mehtab, you go back to that slide uh, mentioning the tests of um, the urodynamic tests. Yes, this one. Yes. Uh, I mean, these are the certain tests. Uh, these are not urodynamic tests, for instance, uh, stress test, perineal PET test, Q-tip test, blood and egg elevation test. Now, these are the tests which are done to um, clarify uh, the female incontinence uh, and they are not qualitative but rather quantitative tests they uh, always tell you the magnitude of the disease uh, there are certain pads for instance uh, these pads are placed within the vagina and they are particularly done to uh, evaluate the fistulous uh, type of uh, incontinence the same goes with the q-tip test and the stress test so these are the tests which uh, um, are normally done for the quantitative aspect of uh, uh, incontinence. How much is the problem? How severe is the problem? Whether it can be easily tackled by means of um, certain um, uh, medications or certain uh, exercises that can increase the tone of uh, the pelvic floor muscles or there has to be done in a separate way. So these are the tests which um, are not done in every case, but they are done whenever one wants to know what is the ultimate effect of, uh, or how much is the uh, lifestyle affected by the problem. So uh, th this is one thing. Uh, th these are vaguely described here. We we will take it take them up separately. Each has got a different kind of uh, baggage. Yes, Fazan. Then you want to say something? No. So uh, if there are no questions, then uh, we can just uh, move on. Sir. Yes. yes. Hamza, you, Sonic, you want to say something? Uh, sir, sir, if the uh, external uterus splinter is present in female, and uh, second question is, uh, sir, uh, any exercise like uh, Kegel exercise have uh, helped in uh, uh, urine incontinence? Yes, uh, you, you have rightly said uh, Kegel exercises are important and they can be done and they are part and parcel of the physiotherapy. You, so, you see, uh, whenever you do treatment like incontinence treatment, um, majority of your treatments need a physiotherapy um, follow-up also. And... Uh, Physiotherapy has got uh, a lot of exercises, not only Kegel exercises, but also ex other exercises that increases the tone of the musculature that makes the hammock, as I said earlier on. And one of them is uh, the elevator and eye muscle. So it increases the tone. There are certain exercises which are done to um, ease and relax both the things, contraction as well as relaxation. So whenever the person has got more control over the pelvic floor muscles, the uh, mechanism of incontinence, uh, control of incontinence will become easier. So yes, uh, it has got a role. Your first uh, question was about the presence of external sphincter. The difference between male urethra and female urethra is nothing but the length of the urethra. Female urethra is around about four centimeters in length but it has got uh, the same kind of uh, continuous mechanism as of uh, male urethra. Uh, just because of the reason that it is short, uh, it is more prone to have uh, incontinence as compared to male, uh, but otherwise, uh, anatomically speaking, it has got all the elements 
present in both the genders they are the same in female the uh, because the female gender has to go through a physiological process and that is pregnancy and delivery of the child so the pelvic muscle has got more brunt on it as compared to a male gender so the tone of the pelvic muscle has to be of a of a high degree in order to make a female person a uh, continent in later part of life perhaps so the more the uh, gestation and pregnancy and delivery a uh, vaginal delivery in a in a person the more will be the chance of having laxity in the pelvic floor muscle so uh, what a pelvic uh, uh, what a female gender needs is better pelvic muscle and that can be done through simple physiology simple uh, uh, simple exercises uh, which can be uh, easily taught by physiotherapist so uh, just holding the uh, breath doing well selva kegel exercises uh, these are the things if done properly they can help a lot in um, in female gender to make a continent right right okay so uh, i think we will call it a day to do uh, today um, and um, one thing is uh, i want to share with you is about mohsin's uh, uh, presentation day before yesterday it has got the highest number of uh, clicks on youtube and uh, which uh, i was seeing as uh, 190 um, views so uh, all those uh, presentations that you make are uploaded in the same evening and uh, we also see them through that angle how many of uh, um, uh, views uh, a particular presentation has and that is actually um, an indirect assessment of um, somebody who is actually seeing it and somebody who wants to learn so uh, for me it's a satisfaction in that end for uh, from the viewpoint of presenter again it's a satisfaction and sort of an encouragement that if uh, somebody is seeing your uh, presentation then all those efforts that have been put in are actually um, are actually credited and they are appreciated so again uh, mohsin congratulations you have got the highest yeah. number of clicks right so we'll meet again tomorrow thank you the office